behind, which is almost complete, apart from the handle, is this rather nice cream jug. Uh, this is in earthenware with a lead glaze, and it dates to the late Victorian period, or possibly the uh, early 20th century, the Edwardian period. This was the standard way that cream was supplied at the time. Uh, and it could be bought or delivered from many different suppliers around London. Um, some of them are impressed with the name of the dairies that supplied it. Uh, this one has PS on the base, which is more likely the wholesaler or the pottery that provided it in the first place. Another complete item uh, found on the foreshore is this white salt glaze stoneware pot. Um, these vessels uh, also date to the mid to late Victorian period and were used to supply and sell a variety of foodstuffs um, from meat paste and extracts uh, right up to luxury wares such as caviar. They are transfer printed with the name of the foodstuff or the shop that sells it or sold it. Um, but presumably this one would have had a paper label which has since come off. Here we see some nice tiles, um, earthenware tiles. On the left hand side we can see some original medieval tiles. Um, these are known as pen style tiles um, because a lot were made in pen in Buckinghamshire. Um, and were used in high status buildings such as churches and palaces. Um, the design is impressed on the top of the tile and then filled with a different colour clay so you get the two-tone effect. Um, and these are 14th century and they're very nice finds. And there's a huge variety of designs that were produced in the medieval period. Um, interestingly, you can see also a Victorian version of the same thing. Um, there was a very, very um, large Gothic revival in Victorian times. Uh, and very similar style of tiles were made, um, but they're much cleaner in execution and much more um, highly fired. So they, they look obviously rather different uh, in execution, although very similar in style. Um, there are other undecorated tiles here, um, some of which may well be medieval or early post-medieval as well, um, very commonly used in floors um, in those periods.
This is also a very interesting shard of clay. Um, it's probably part of a post-medieval stove tile. You can see that the body of the clay is red, but then there is a thin layer of white clay, um, and then there's been a design moulded in it, and then it's been glazed green on top of that. Um, I think it's a stove tile, so that would be part of a large freestanding stove which would sit in the corner of a very high status building, a uh, palace or a merchant's house, uh, possibly a monastery also. Um, these were never very common in this country, they're more common in European countries. Um, but they would date uh, from the early 16th century uh, right through into the 17th century. So it's a very nice find and rather uh, rare. They say they're very high status and never very common in this country. Here we see a very good selection of post-medieval pottery and these would be the types of utensils that were in everyday use in the kitchen and for industrial purposes. Um, some are made of red clay and some are made of white firing clay. The white firing clay was uh, very popular uh, right through the Tudor period and up to the early 18th century, whereas the red clay was in very, very high use um, all the way through the period uh, right from the 16th century through the Tudor period right up to Victorian times for industrial pottery and kitchen pottery. So let's have a look at some of these pieces in detail. The first couple of pieces have some very obvious thumbing around the rim. This is just below the rim, uh, not around the base as it would be on medieval pottery. Um, it has a decorative feature, but it also has a practical aspect in making it easier to lift a heavy pot off the fire, uh, maybe a pot full of liquid for cooking. Um, these vessels were made in and around London. Uh, examples have been found at the Woolwich kiln uh, and they date from the 16th and 17th centuries. Um, you can see on one piece that there's a very obvious grey core to the red clay. Um, this is because the clay has not been fired at a high enough temperature and it's normally an indicator of an earlier date so it's likely that this bit uh, would be 16th century uh, or maybe early 17th century. So um, a piece of Tudor cooking pot. Um, the next part is uh, the piece is a uh, the base of a salt glaze stoneware bottle or jar. Um, this would be the sort of um, jar imported from Germany, um, and it might be the base of a Bartman um, uh, bottle. Um, the, the third piece has uh, a lovely bit of decorative thumbing which uh, would either be used um, uh, around the belly of a pot um, and this will also be 16th or 17th century for this piece.
Um, the next piece is a very interesting industrial piece of pottery, um, which are commonly found on the foreshore. There were many factories producing sugar uh, around the foreshore, around the Thames, on the Thames um, in the post-medieval period. And this is the very base uh, of a sugar cone mould. So it would be filled with liquid sugar and the liquid would drain out of the little nozzle and you'd be left with a cone of sugar, which is how it was sold before it was granulated much later in its history. Um, so this could be any time from the 17th, 18th or 19th century. And normally when you look inside, there'd be a white wash on it, which would be from the process of producing sugar. Um, the next piece is a very, very thick and heavy piece of redware. Um, probably from a very large vessel, it might have had some sort of industrial use. It obviously needed to be strong um, for whatever process it was used in. Um, now we move on to some handles, and the first is a long curved handle. This is probably coming from a pipkin or a skillet. Uh, again, a cooking utensil that you would use um, in the fire for um, producing, making food. Uh, and then we see some other handles from items um, which are very nice and all handmade, hand pulled, of course. Um, a, a little bit later is this piece of black pottery. Uh, it's black basalt. Um, this was made by Wedgwood and a lot of other companies and um, it looks Roman because it was part of the classical revival at the end of the 19th, um, at the end of the 18th century and the beginning of the 19th century uh, when the people were very interested in this the classical style and it is a stoneware, a very thin stoneware and they started to make this sort of material about the 1780s and it was popular up to the 1830s. Um, and also we notice in this lovely selection of pottery that there is a bit of blue stoneware, otherwise known as jasper. Again, this was made popular by Wedgwood, but was made by other factories as well. Uh, coloured blue, there are other colour va colours available. And this also started to be made in the 1780s and is popular right up to the present day. Uh, and very decorative too with the white sprigged design on it. of um, glazed whiteware. This is post-medieval pottery. 
um, um, you can see the holes in it, the glaze has run through the holes that have been pierced in the side. So they were made, uh, produced uh, with these holes in it uh, as used for a strainer uh, or a colander to, to drain the water from items. Um, the next bit is green glazed uh, whiteware. So again, this would date any time from 1550 up to about the early 18th century, 1710, they started to go out of fashion. Um, its shape it probably is a chamber pot or a large pot, and it most likely comes from the boardware industry, which was centred around the Surrey-Hampshire border uh, in the post-medieval period. The last bit of pottery in this video uh, is by far the oldest. Um, this is a little handle, a round rod handle from a medieval jug. Um, you can see the pottery is whiteware, but there are very um, large quantities of visible inclusions. So it's part of the Surrey whiteware industry. It may be made in Cheam or possibly in the Surrey Hampshire borders. Uh, and this would date from 1350 to 1500 in the Surrey whiteware tradition. So it's a very nice find of a medieval jug handle from the Thames in London. These very attractive shards of pottery um, are slipware and they were produced in huge quantities both in Staffordshire and Bristol and also in London and other places uh, all the way through from the mid 17th century um, well in London the Isleworth pottery factory was still producing them in the 1830s and they are slip trailed and there is a huge variety of designs, very attractive designs that are produced on these uh, dishes. Um, and most of them are baking dishes. Uh, you can see the pie crust edges on the edge of those and they're used for baking in the oven. Um, and they're very, very fine pieces and lovely to find them. Very. <laughs>